So we've got to do our third video concerning <clears throat> rational expressions. This is R6. It's called Rational Expressions and More Operations on Radicals. We're mostly dealing with rational expressions. We talked about multiplying rational expressions in the last video. We did want, we started to divide rational and, and we ran out of paper. So we said that we should do the whole thing over again, which makes a lot of sense. No problem. Let me put up the title. It's called the Rational Expressions. Rational Expressions. Um, and we're up to, this is C, this is the third one. Okay. The division that we were doing, let's start totally from the beginning. Understandably, we absolutely should start totally from the beginning. It's 7x minus 7y over x squared minus 2xy plus y squared divided by divided by 21x over x squared minus xy. We said last time, and we're staying consistent, that the first move you need to make before you start doing the, as you start doing this problem, is repeat exactly what you saw on the left-hand side there, the, the furthermost to the left, 7x minus 7y over x squared minus 2xy plus y squared, copy everything down, then put the multiplication sign. Last time I put a little x over here like this as multiplication, but this is also good. That's a multiplication sign. And then flip the second one. The second one, not the first, the second one gets flipped. The reciprocal, to use the fancy language. x squared minus xy over 21x. Flip it. Now, I'm going to use my scrap, I'm going to do scrap paper over here. What I got to do is factor this, factor this, factor this, and this is only one, this is only one term, so it's not factorable, just one term, you just leave one term alone. But the other ones, let's see what we can do. Notice, if we can get the GCF after out of 7x minus 7y. I'll show it to you in more detail than I did last time, even though some of this is pretty straightforward. 7 goes into both. Bring out the 7 from the GCF, divide 7x by 7, you get x, minus 7y by 7, and you get minus y. And there we have a new and improved upper left, 7 times x minus y. Okay, so let me cordon this off so I have some room here. Okay, what about this one? What about the factoring this? Now notice that there's this perfect square here, x squared, right? Whenever you have a, an x with a, with a, uh, with, with a uh, exponent that is even, 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, those are perfect squares. So there's two perfect squares here. So let's go over to my scrap, scrap paper and let's determine whether this is one of those perfect square trinomials we talked about. Let's take the square root of, 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 uh, of x squared, which is x, take the square root of y squared, which is y, multiply it times negative 2. We need a negative, if anything's going to work. And what do we get? Negative 2xy, that's exactly this. All the symptoms are there. It is a perfect square trinomial. Now, we know a shortcut for a perfect square trinomial. Take the square root of x squared, which is x, Take the square root of y squared, which is y, and put a minus in between because it says a minus there, and then just take another copy of it right next door, x minus y. It's all done. It is completely factored. Times, times, what's on top over here? x squared minus xy. So I'll go to my scrap paper, I'll go to my scrap paper, and I'll do, and I'll try to factor this, x squared minus xy. Bring out the GCF. What do they both have in common? X's. Take the smallest one, X. X squared divided by X is X. Minus XY, the X's cancel. What's left? The minus is left and the Y is left. So there's an X times X minus Y in the upper right. 21X, nothing I can do about it. Leave it alone. Let's see what, what we can cancel. Every numerator and denominator that matches, we can cancel. X minus Y, X minus Y, gone. X minus Y, X minus Y, gone. X and X, gone. Left standing, the 7 over 21. What's 7 over 21? 7 goes into 7 once, 
the 21 three times. Final answer, one third. That is the full story of this division of rational expressions. Okay, it's a little miscellaneous, this uh, R6, that, that this last of our review sections, R6. It's a little miscellaneous. Now, we're not doing multiplying and dividing. Um, the, uh, we're not multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Now, we've got to go to adding rational expressions. And that's going to involve some rem remembering a little bit of stuff about fractions. Okay, let me show you at least one um, over here on what's left of this paper. Here's the question. The qu here's, here's the topics, basically, adding ra rational expressions, right? We just finished multiplying in the previous video and dividing in this video right here up top. And now we're adding rational expressions. I'm going to call it problem number one over again. And I'm going to show you the problem. It is 7 over 4a plus 11 over 10a squared and we've got ourselves a problem here because there's no common denominator. So how do I deal with this if there's no common denominator? Okay, what is the greatest number? We have to deal with it like we had to deal with fractions. I got to change it into a common denominator. What is the greatest number that 4 and 10 will go into? I'm sorry, the lowest number. I apologize. The lowest number, L, the LCD, lowest common denominator, the lowest number that 4 and 10 will go into evenly. That number is 20. 4 goes into 20. 10 goes into 20. There's no lower number I can get lower than 20 that they both go into. What is the lowest number that a and a squared will go into? It's the, the highest of the two. a will go into a squared, and so will a squared go into a squared. So our LCD is 20a squared. That's what this has got to turn into. All right. Now, but if I change 4a into 20a squared, Right. Let me let me go to some scrap paper over here. If I change 20a 4a into 20a squared, I, I that means I've multiplied it by something. Whatever I multiply that to get here, I got to multiply the seven. So let me go check out how I did that. 20a squared divided by 4a divided by 4a will tell me what I multiplied it by. 20 divided by 4 is equal to 5, and a squared over a is a. So I multiplied. It, I, that tells me how what I multiplied it by. 5a. I multiplied it 5. To get from 4a to 20a squared, you have to multiply by 5a. If I multiply by the bottom by 5a, I have to multiply the top by 5a. All right. Little more scrap paper work. How did I get from 10a squared to 20a squared? How do I get from 10a squared? So let's take 20a squared and divide it by 10a squared. They cancel. 20 divided by 10 is equal to 2, right? We got a 5a the first time, 2. So I, how did I get from 10a squared to 20a squared? How do you get there? You multiply times 2. If I multiply that by 2, I got to multiply this type 2, 11 times 2. All right. Where does that get me? I know that this is a little cluttered, so pardon me. But what is this equal to? This is equal to 35a. This is equal to 35a. Right, oh, it's going. I'm putting it over here because we can see it all at one time. 35a plus 22. 11 times 2 is 22. Over what? Well, they're both the same thing. 20a squared. That was the idea. 20a squared. And here is the final answer. So what did I do for this? Let me go over the steps. So I I had 4a and 10a squared. They're not, they're not in common. I need a common denominator. So I look for the number that will, the lowest number that 4 and 10 will go into, that's 20. What's the lowest number a and a squared will go into? a squared. So I know their common denominator is 20a squared, 20a squared. Okay, but what do I do to that 7? If I change 4a radically, I got to change 7a, 7 the exact same way. So I go to scrap paper and I say, what's 20a squared, 20a squared divided by the old, the old 4a? I get 5a. So if I, from 4a to 20a squared, it took me, I had to multiply by 5a, I multiply the 7 also by 5a, 5a times 7. Then how do I get from 10a squared to 20a squared? So I go to scrap paper, take 20a squared, the bigger one, divide by the smaller one, 10a squared. Okay, they cancel, I get 20 divided by 10, which is 2. So that's how you get from 10a squared to 20a squared, by multiplying by 2. If I multiply that by 2, I got to multiply the top by 2, 11 times 2. All right. 
That produced 35a. That produced 22 over the common denominator 20a squared. And we're done. The problem is over. That is what has to be done for that type of problem. Okay, let me see if I can get another piece of paper out of this thing. And here we go. Let's try it out. Let's try to get another one. Here we go. All right, continuing with the last part of R6, where they want us to rationalize the denominator. Sorry about that. Rationalize, rationalize the denominator. So we got two more problems to go and we're finished with the review section in R6 and the reviews are, are done. Here is problem one, number one. Rationalize the denominator. You might not have heard of this or it maybe sounds familiar, whatever, but how do you deal with when they're asking you to rationalize the denominator? So it's going to be easier than you think. Rationalize the denominator means we don't want a square root in the bottom. We got to get rid of that square root. So now, Am I allowed to, if I multiply, I'm going over to scrap paper just for a second. If I multiply 7 times 1, did I change 7? No. So whenever I multiply times 1, I'm okay. All right. Bear that in mind. I can't, I cannot tolerate that square root in the denominator. Here's a way of getting rid of it. Multiply it times the square root of x. Square root of x times the square root of x will turn into x. The rational, the, the radical sign will disappear. That's what we want. But if you multiply the bottom by square root of x, you got to multiply the top by square root of x. It's like multiplying times 1. 5 over 5 is 1. Square root of x over square root of x is 1. But that's perfectly okay. What do we get? 5 square root of x over x. They're happy. That's the answer. They're happy because there's no longer a radical sign in the denominator. That's called rationalizing the denominator, making it a normal number. They don't care if the radical is up top, if there's a radical up top. Let me show you another one. And this is going to involve that famous word that we used in the past, conjugates. What if you have a problem like this? 4 over the square root of 7 minus the square root of 5. How do you deal with a situation like that? Here's what you do. Figure out what is the conjugate of square root of 7 minus the square root of 5. It is square root of 7 plus the square root of 5. That's its conjugate. We used that word before. If you multiply the bottom by the comp, by the square root of 7 plus the square root of 5, you got to multiply the top by the square root of 7 plus the square root of 5. What's the idea? We don't want any radicals on the bottom. We don't care. That's the denominator. We don't rationalize the denominator. We don't want any radicals there. Okay, if that's the case, so then multiply 4 times the square root of 7, 4 times the square root of 5. Okay, that's good. What's the square root of 7 times the square root of 7? 7. What's the square root of 7 times the square root of 5? Square root of 35. What's negative, five negative square root of 5 times, negative, times the square root of 7? Minus the square root of 35. That's the idea. And what's the square root of 5 times square root of 5? It's 5. It's 5. But is it plus 5? No. It's negative times plus, which is minus. These two cancel. Here's the final answer. 4 square root of 7 plus 4 square root of 5 over 2. It's almost the final answer. 7 minus 5 is 2. The bottom is rationalized. 2 goes into 2, 2 goes, in, two goes into 4, 2 goes into 4. So the final answer is 2 square root of 7 plus 2 square root of 5. I got to end the video and quick.